Hey guys, hope you all are doing very, very well. Um, before this video starts, I just want to say a very quick thank you for the response of my first ever YouTube video. I am very shocked and grateful by uh, what you all said, um, and I will definitely keep on doing videos from now on. Um, but in this YouTube video, I was going to give a quick run through of my university application experience, um, my UCAS journey, and my and how I eventually got accepted into University College London. So, as I mentioned in my first video, I wanted to apply for university in the UK because I want to try something new, something exciting, something fun and fresh. And I just don't think that Sweden really could provide that with me in the mo at the moment. So last summer, which was the summer before my senior year, I would started to do some mild research on universities and the application process and stuff like that. Um, but I hadn't really started earlier because I always thought that I had a whole year um, to apply. Because most Swedish students often take a gap year between their high school graduation and their university beginning. Um, so I was just doing some like some small research because I was a bit curious about the process. Um, but then I suddenly found out that Brexit would have a huge effect on EU students applying for the UK. EU has always worked in a way that students studying in different countries in EU get hugely discounted university prices. So as an example, many um, students from across EU get free education in Sweden. And it's also similar to different students in the EU wanting to study in the UK. The fee for an EU student in the UK is £9,250 per year. For that exact same education, an international student, which is basically any student outside of the EU Union, needs to pay an international fee, which is £28,610. And that is a difference with £19,360. So an international student is paying around £19,000 more per year than an EU student. However, there is a catch. These Brexit rules are going to be implemented 2021, not 2020. What this means is that um, EU students starting their education in the UK 2020 will receive the discounted tuition fee all three years. So this put me in a precarious situation. If I were to begin 2021, I would have to spend approximately £58,000 more than if I were to begin my, my education uh, 2020. So last summer, in July, I of course decided to apply for university 2020 and not wait a year and apply for 2021. But this put me in a <laughs> really tight time frame. Like I, I had such little time to prepare for this application, I'm going to tell you why. So, what universities was I going to apply for? The only two universities that I kind of knew in the UK before, um, like before doing my research was Cambridge University and Oxford University, also together known as Oxbridge. And seeing as these two were so uh, reputable and famous worldwide, I of course <laughs> decided I had to apply for them. The one thing that goes with this, however, is that their application deadline is three months earlier than everyone else's. So if you want to apply for Oxbridge, you have to apply for every university, um, including Oxbridge then, three months earlier. And seeing as I already was extremely limited with time, I was in for a hectic <laughs> autumn and summer. Um, 
In July, I started the application process and my application needed to be in in the middle of October. So in that tight time frame, I needed to do extracurricular activities, I needed to write a personal statement, I needed to decide what I was going to study. And I had no idea what I was going to study. Which made this whole process very stressful. But seeing as I literally did not have a choice, I uh, got going. So I started by actually contacting a private counsellor that would help me with my uh, degree and university choices. Um, and what we, um, what she advised me to do was to apply for the Natural Sciences Bachelor's degree. And what the Natural Sciences degree is, is that you pick two subjects um, from the sciences that is biology, physics, maths and statistics, chemistry, um, yeah, and those, it's, you choose two of, of those subjects that you study at the same time. So you basically get a dual degree. And I actually like the idea of that very much because I didn't really know what I wanted to um, study, so it seemed fitting. Um, and I had also studied a lot, a lot of science in school. So, um, yeah, I just chose that. And then for the universities, I chose Cambridge, because you, you can only choose Oxford or Cambridge. So Cambridge, I chose um, Durham University. I chose the University of Bath, the University of York, and UCL, or University College of London. Um, so those were my choices that I put in on the... Uh, UCAS, which is the uh, kind of centralised application website for all universities in the UK. So after I have, so after I had picked my choices, I had to start preparing for my personal statement. And what is the personal statement, you ask? Well, basically, it's a letter that you write to all your universities where you kind of describe your passion for the subject that you want to, um, that you plan to study and like extracurricular activities you've done connected to the, your subject and like why you want to study the subject, like what books you've read, like kind of what you know about the subject. And this is a thing that varies a lot from Sweden because in the application process for Swedish universities you only send in your grades and nothing else, which is totally different from the UK and the US. And seeing as I only had two and a half months to prepare for my personal statement, I got going immediately. Like this, the day I decided that I was like dead, I, that I was dead set on applying, I emailed like so many professors at the Science University here in Gothenburg. Like, like begging them to like let me help them out with something, with some event, let me do some research. Like it was <laughs> insane, um, but thankfully uh, a few professors answered, and I got to do some extracurriculars connected to physics and maths. So that was amazing. After me and my counselor finalized my personal statement that I worked so 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 hard for, um, it was time for one last thing the Natural Sciences Admissions Assessment for the University of Cambridge. <clears throat> and this test, something else I'm telling you guys, it was horrible, it was tough, it was so short on time but still so stressful. Ugh, it was so bad. So basically this test is a an entrance exam for only Cambridge, so not for the other universities, thank god. Um, it's basically a physics, math and chemistry exam and it went so 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 poorly. I had studied pretty like, hard for this exam, um, but it just, mm, no, it just did not work out. <clears throat> so when I got an email from Cambridge University a, a few months later, I wasn't shocked <laughs> to see a letter of rejection. 
Um, I'm not gonna blame my rejection solely on this test. Of course, the personal statement and grades also play a role. But still, like this test, not fair, not fair. So after my rejection from Cambridge University, it was silent. Like my UCAS website, whatever, was silent for months. I got my rejection from Cambridge in December. And then I got my first notification after that in March. So after I got the notification, I was I went nervously in <laughs> to the uh, UCAS portal. But thankfully, I actually got an accept. I saw an acceptance from the University of Bath. So finally, I got a, I had got accepted to an to an English university. And after my first acceptance in March, the, de the decision started to roll in pretty quickly actually, thank God. Um, next, I uh, got an acceptance letter from Durham University, which was, I wish I was super happy about. I really liked Durham's like campus and their course, just a very good university I've heard. So that was nice. And then like a week after that, I <laughs> sadly got an <clears throat> a rejection from the University of York but I hadn't really planned on going there anyway so it didn't really I wasn't too sad about that and then after this it was a while until my last decision so as my decision for UCL, UCL came up I quickly I kind of realized that UCL was the only university I would like to attend out of the four I'd just got a decision up for. That was basically because University College London was one situated in London. It was the third best ranked university in the UK and the eighth best ranked university in the whole world. The natural sciences course looked so amazing, the modules looked so like fun and interesting. And just like London, like come on, I really wanted to get into UCL. And UCL's decisions were supposed to come out um, the 30th of April. And of course, the decisions did not come out the 30th of April. Um, I think I waited like two weeks. It was like some time in May when I finally got a notification from the UCL portal or the UCAS portal that I had received a decision. I remember that I was down in my basement like playing some video game on my sofa and I was like I lost my breath. I was so <laughs> nervous. Like it was insane how like nervous I got in that that moment. Like my heart started beating so 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 quickly. So I with very shaky hands, like come on. I <laughs> I logged into the UCAS portal and I got accepted to University College London to study a bachelor's degree in natural sciences with physics and mathematics as my like STEAMs modules or whatever. So I was super super happy about that. I got into my top choice after Cambridge, but now afterwards I'm pretty happy that I got into UCL because London, come on. Um, so yeah, I did, received all my decisions and I was actually very like happy, super happy. So my final thoughts on this whole application process, my this UCAS journey was that I'm super happy I went through with it. Although it was very stressful and required loads of energy and motivation <laughs> from my part, um, I'm so happy that I actually like was forced to apply and actually did it because now I'm moving to London this autumn um, starting at a university that I'm so excited to be at and just oh, I'm just so excited for my future. So yeah that is the end of uh, this video. Um, if you liked it I hope you like and eventually subscribe. Leave a comment if you want to know anything more about uh, and the application process as a Swedish or international student or like anything else about this whole like UCAS or whatever um, I would gladly answer your questions down below in the comments section 
Bye, see you.